Directional equivalence is this idea where there's no guarantee of return. You can go from a source text item to a target text item and then look for an equivalent back in the source language and culture and not get back to the same place. Equivalence is therefore directional and it's created by the translator through making choices between available alternatives. This is quite important because it, it, it recognizes from the beginning that what the translator does is not wholly determined by the source text, or at least the source text will open this range of possibilities within which the translator has to perform an action, and that action is in some ways unpredictable. That action uh, and that unpredictability doesn't mean, however, that the outcome is not equivalent. It just means that there are several kinds of equivalents to choose between. And all the theories that recognize different kinds of, equ of equivalents are therefore, for me, directional. The classic is Nida's distinction between formal and dynamic equivalents. Formal, literal, according to the text, dynamic, uh, functional, according to what is going to work in the target culture. There are many, many theories of this opposition. Uh, we can go back to Schleiermacher, who opposed the foreignizing translation to the domesticating translation. Newmark, semantic translation, communicative translation. Gilles Lévy, a little different. He said some translations are illusory because they create the illusion that they are not translations. And these would be the domesticating translations or the dynamic equivalents. And these uh, he opposed to anti-illusory uh, translations, those which show that they are translations. Uh, Juliana Haus has the same thing. She opposes overt translations, the ones we know are translations, to covert translations, one that, ones that hide their status. Uh, Christiana Nord, similar uh, in her distinction between uh, documentary and instrumental translations. Documentary, they tell you about the foreign document. Instrumental, they want to carry out the function in the target culture. Gideon Turi opposes adequacy to acceptability. Lawrence Venuti opposes resistant to fluent. And all of this tradition could be taken back to Cicero, who opposed uh, the way of translating ut in debris in the manner of the interpreter, uh, as opposed to ut orator in the manner of the great speaker of the orator. Uh, the interpreter was supposed to be very literal in giving exactly what the other party had said, whereas the orator could reinvent the text and make it live anew. That's a long, strong tradition. Most of those theorists treat these terms as polarities. There's one extreme there and another extreme there. Although I hasten to add that Schleiermacher said, do not get lost in the middle ground, for reasons that uh, constitute an interesting ideology and have to be investigated, I suggest. I also place within this paradigm of directional equivalence uh, its Darwood Goods uh, application of relevance theory uh, to translation. Uh, because Good assumes that once you have a translation, uh, the receiver, the user of the text, uh, presupposes a complete interpretative resemblance. That interpretative resemblance, that the way I interpret this text resembles the way the absent source text was or should be interpreted. And that assumption for good is enough to define translation. And I suggest what he is defining is actually equivalence. Good uh, allows that the language is a very imperfect instrument, that texts only give us clues as to communicative intent, that 
uh, all interpretation, including translation, is, is the making of, of, of selections and choices. So he's very much uh, within the directional paradigm, uh, but he doesn't abandon, I, I suggest, the paradigm of equivalence at all. I agree very much with Wood and with that view. I do think that when we receive translations or present a text as a translation, there is a socially constructed belief in some kind of shared value. It's an illusion, no doubt, but it's there nevertheless. And for that very simple reason, a sociological reason, just watching the way translations operate in our societies, I suggest that although equivalence has received numerous harsh critiques in recent years, uh, perhaps we cannot abandon the paradigm entirely. And perhaps we should look closely at how the dialectics of the natural and the directional played out in history and are still moving through our theories.